At the White House press briefing, the spray tan president suggested injecting disinfectant, presumably like bleach, as, po as a possible cure for the coronavirus that could be explored by medical professionals. Now, Trump claims he was testing the media with sarcasm to see how they were reported. I would suggest that there are other areas in which the president could help as far as testing, but you know, baby steps. You know what he said today, that it's not really the federal government's a job for testing, it's up to states. We can discuss that later. Now, Governors Larry Hogan, a Republican from Maryland, and Gretchen Whitmer, a Democrat from Michigan, say that the poison control hotlines in their states were flooded with questions about the safety of ingesting household cleaning products to combat the virus. Maybe it's just me, but I remember as a kid, they used to put those little stickers with the tongue sticking out, telling you not to drink bleach. But apparently people are asking these questions. At least they're asking first. Ngozi Azike, the public health director from Illinois, claims that they have had cases of people gargling with a combination of mouthwash and bleach and using detergent as a sinus rinse. The CDC had to tweet about the dangers of household cleaners. Trump also claimed that sunlight and heat kills the virus, despite the anecdotal fact that places like Louisiana, Singapore, and Los Angeles County have had really high numbers of cases. The fact that many people called to inquire before ingesting household cleaning products is good, so I want to repeat that. However, it says something about the power and influence of the presidency. If Trump was indeed being sarcastic, a briefing about an existential health crisis that has claimed the lives of 56,000 Americans alone in this country is not the time to do it. So what do you think, Siraj? I agree with you, Jason. I would say that obviously openly thinking about using bleach or UV light as a cure for coronavirus is obviously problematic. And this, I know President Trump is one of those particular people who always is loose and fast with his words. And he tends to just, you know, say whatever off the cuff and then think about it later. That's always been somewhat of an, uh, for a lot of his supporters, been an admirable quality because they think that he's just someone who just says what he thinks and he just, there's no filter. That is the case for him with a lot of things. Here's where it tends to get dangerous. And this is the, the particular instance I would highlight as when you start saying things without thinking through them, because you are the president of the United States, people will start to think that this is something of authority, that you are actually advocating for a particular solution. And this is where the, you know things tend to go wrong. And we're going to start to see more and more people, as you mentioned, start to inquire about whether this stuff actually works. Of course, there are going to be a lot of people on social media who will you know, either believe what they want to believe, either they think it's actually going to work or whether they think it's not going to work. I, I think people have a little bit more common sense than to think that ingesting or mainlining bleach is actually going to cure coronavirus. But if you think about the average population and how smart they are, remember that at least half, half of that is at least dumber than that. So <laughs> look... I would love it if people knew right off the bat whether, you know, they think things like bleach uh, is going to cure the coronavirus. Um, as you know, Jason, it, you and I both know that there are going to definitely be people out there, uh, some fringe element, who believe that this is something that works. And unfortunately, they're putting their lives at risk. And, uh, you know, because President Trump pontificates about this particular uh, or openly uh, starts to think about these sort of things, it's going to put more people uh, in danger and he's going to have to answer for it. Yeah, you know, the funny thing to me is that on, you know, and particularly on social media, you saw people who were trying to spin it so that he was correct. You know, so again, one of the things you and I have discussed is hydroxychloroquine and his, you know, suggesting that hydroxychloroquine could be a cure for coronavirus. Uh, now, the evidence on that is a little dicey. We have a study out of France that casts some doubt on that. There's a study from the, U, uh, from the VA here in the United States 
that says that it's not good for people who are gravely ill. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's questions about that. There's also anecdotal evidence where doctors have said that it's helped. Uh, I think I tend to think that probably people just got better because a lot of people have actually just been getting better. So we don't know whether it was the drug or right, whether it was evidence one way or the other, whether yeah. it's actually a hundred percent conclusive that this stuff works. Right. And, but at least it's an actual drug, you know what I mean? And people would take it in order to get access for the most part, you need to be under the care of a physician mm -hmm. and, you know, get it from a pharmacy. When you're talking about household cleaners and bleach, that's where it gets really dangerous. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, this president has followers who literally follow his word over scientists. They're like, screw Dr. Fauci, screw Dr. Burks. If Trump said it, it's right. And that's what makes it even more dangerous. They will say, oh, well, you know, Trump said it. You know, I believe Trump, I trust Trump, and his followers, are, you know, we've never seen a presidency like this. It wasn't even, like, it wasn't even close to like this with Obama, uh, where people will literally hang on his every word, and if he tells you to jump off a bridge that it's going to be fun, people are going to do it. So I think that that's the real danger here um, with President Trump. He has, you know, a small following, I would argue. But that small following is more loyal and more, you know, uh, obsequious than we've ever seen in history. And I think that that makes what he says really dangerous. And that puts a lot of responsibility in his lap. And he can't throw out these kind of dangerous ideas like that. Yeah.